Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a book review on Hidden Sea by Gregory Maguire. Hidden Sea by Gregory Maguire takes us to the enchanted Black Forest of Bavaria and to the Salons of Munich in the early 19th century as it reveals the backstory of the Nutcracker. We follow a young man named Dirk who will become the one-eyed toy maker Drosselmeyer. Dirk is abused and challenged by life, but dreams to do more and find purpose and meaning in his life. Don't let the premise of this novel fool you, you guys. Uh, you know, right here on the cover, it says a tale of the once and future Nutcracker. Um, I, I went into this novel, I, I, I really don't know, I think I went into this expecting it to be a bit more fantasy based, a bit more fantastical. I think I was expecting it to literally, literally be an adaptation of the Nutcracker. So on the surface this novel almost appears to be a, re a retelling of the Nutcracker and the Mouse King which was uh, I think a, a short story or a novella written in 1816 by E.T.A. Hoffman and of course we all know about the very famous ballet which was released in 1892. So yeah, there's there's all of that, the novella, the ballet, you, you think when you go into this you're expecting literally a retelling of those stories. Seriously, I was expecting a nutcracker to be fighting with some mice. <laughs> you yeah, guys, I was expecting, like I said, something a bit more whimsical and fantastical. But no, this novel is not really a traditional retelling, if you want to think about it that way. It's not really a retelling of the Nutcracker. What this really is about, it's a retelling of the Drosselmeyer character, who in, uh, I, I guess, both the novella and the ballet, he's, uh, he's the godfather of the main little girl. So when you start this novel, uh, you're first introduced to this little boy in the Black Forest of Bavaria. His name is Dirk. Uh, there's a lot of mystery when the novel opens because he is an orphan, but who is this mystery man and woman that he's living with? Which, by the way, that is a fantastic reveal by the end of the novel, you guys. Who the mysterious man and woman are that have kind of adopted him as a child. Uh, but yeah, he's he's a, a little boy. Life just doesn't seem to be going anywhere. He's never been outside of the Black Forest, but he eventually kind of gets an opportunity to get away. And yeah, the novel, he once he does kind of get away, once he starts heading out, he starts coming into different situations, meeting various different people, really kind of getting into the world. And yeah, by the time you do get to the very end of this novel, that's when you do finally get to him. He is not named Dirk anymore. He becomes Godfather Drosselmeyer. Yeah, he makes the Nutcracker. He gives it to Clara. So yeah, that's what this entire novel is building to. It's building to the start of the Nutcracker story, essentially. And even though I had my frustrations with this format, because like I said, I was expecting something a bit more traditional in regards to a retelling of the Nutcracker story, even though I had my frustrations, I still appreciated what this novel was doing, what Gregory Maguire was doing with it, and what this novel essentially is, it's a build a Bildungsroman. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. A Bildungsroman. Uh, and what that translates to, it translates to a coming-of-age story. And yeah, you see this in books like Great Expectations and The Portrait of an Artist as a Young Man. You know, novels like that where it follows uh, a young character, usually a young man, from childhood to teenage years to adulthood and, you know, kind of the trials and tribulations of that journey. And that's that's what this is about. It's a Bildungsroman about a young boy, the trials and tribulations he goes through. So, yeah, I appreciated what uh, Gregory McGuire was doing there in terms of narrative structure and almost kind of paralleling classic literature in some ways. 
And I did really like Dirk as a character. There's something kind of relatable about him. Uh, he's not the most intelligent of characters. Sometimes he can be a little bit daft and stupid. <laughs> he's not really quite sure what's going on sometimes. But he does have his own sort of intelligence when it comes to what matters. Uh, he's he's some he he's often listening to people more than anything. That's kind of his role in this novel. He listens to people tell their stories. Yeah, he can be naive. He can be confused most of the time. But he's always willing to do new things, try new things, kind of branch out. He's often pretty reluctant about about branching out and doing things, but he still does it either way. And like I said, this novel is his journey from childhood to adulthood, the mistakes that he makes, but it all leads up to him becoming that infamous character of Godfather Drosselmeyer from the story and from the ballet. So I cannot repeat enough, you guys. It's very important that you know you're not getting a traditional retelling of the Nutcracker with this novel. Like I said, that's what I was expecting, but I was terribly mistaken. <laughs> so yeah, it's very important that you know what this novel really is. You know, this novel is trying to accomplish something completely different. So I've already mentioned that I really liked Dirk as a character. I also uh, really enjoyed quite a number of the other characters. Uh, there's a young Persian woman. She's a mother. She has two young children. Uh, I really liked her as a character and her relationship with Dirk because it's very platonic. There's nothing with romance going in there. And then I also liked Dirk's relationship with another character named Felix. Uh, Felix is like the complete opposite of Dirk as a character. He's really brash and charming. Uh, just everything Dirk is not. And yeah, I'm not quite sure. I'm still a little confused, you guys. I'm not quite sure if Gregory Maguire was, uh, throwing a bit of homoeroticism into the mix with Dirk and Felix because I was definitely getting some sexual tension between those two and I'm not quite sure if that was being implied or if I was just imagining it. <laughs> so overall, though I had my frustrations initially with this book, I found myself actually enjoying it quite immensely. Uh, it's definitely not my favorite Gregory Maguire book. That definitely goes to the Wicked books and Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister. Those are definitely my favorite books from him. Uh, but yeah, this was still a fine read for what it was. Uh, I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, this book does read a tad bit slow, just to warn you. I mean, it's a very short book, but it, it doesn't read very quickly. It's, it's the type of book that you really need to take it in and think about it. Like I said, Gregory Maguire, he's not doing a traditional retelling here. He has an entirely different purpose with this novel and the way it's laid out and its structures and its themes and whatnot. It's, it's very much almost like a piece of classic literature, if you will, and classic literature tends to read a bit slower. So yeah, that's kind of how this novel turns out. It, it's, it's almost trying to mimic classic literature in some ways, it feels like. So yeah, you do. You have to spend a lot of this novel looking into the imagery and reading into the metaphors and whatnot. But I still continue to like Gregory Maguire's writing style. There's just something about his writing style. It's very rich and descriptive, and I appreciate that about him as a writer. So that's it for this review, you guys. In the comments below, have you guys read Hidden Sea? Do you plan on reading it? Just let me know. And do you have a favorite Gregory Maguire novel? Like I said, my favorites are Wicked and Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister. So you guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this review, you may like these other reviews. Bye, guys.